G'day, how are you going? So I'm going to show you how to transfer Super 8 onto digital. Now there's two ways of thinking about doing it. The way that I've done it was with this machine here. Uh, basically all you're doing is you're shooting out of the projector onto this plate here. It goes in, hits a mirror like that and comes out this side here and you film it with your phone or you can film it with just a camera that you have any camera or your phone so it doesn't really matter uh, because these the phone these days can do you know high quality and so can your uh, cameras so it can be any camera even a point and shoot camera is fine now the other way I'm thinking of doing it um, is might be shooting the wall and then filming that with your phone or I found out I've got my light you know these lights that you can get you see there, that's perfect square with a white plate. So you can you know, project onto there and then film that. Maybe that might work. So you're going to need film, obviously. Your projector. If you don't have a projector, jump on eBay. They're going for about 130, 200 bucks these days. But you've got to make sure that it works and the bulb works. Because it's the bulb. That's, uh, that matters. If the bulb's gone, it's useless, and it's trying to find a bulb for these old clunkers, it's very hard. So make sure if you're on eBay, ask them, you know, does the bulb still work? This, I'll show you, this is actually called a stereo sound image transfer by Polestar. Good luck finding one, you're never gonna find one. <laughs> I mean, this is like, I bought this 20 years ago. And that, even then, that was like 20 years old, so it's probably 40 years old now. If you're thinking of building one, all it is, is it the film projects onto there and bounces off that mirror. You see that mirror there? There. Who knows? <laughs> Maybe the, if you're a bit of a MacGyver. So if you don't know how these things work, the arm comes up like that. The film goes in the front. like that. The take up spool goes on the back, goes in there, then turn it on. Then you've got to catch it. You've got to catch them. Catch them, Jerry. reverse it a bit. Normally you get a, a leader so you can reverse it you know the white leader with the red marks so rewind it to there so then you can start recording uh, straight away and then get the start of the film and then hit the bulb uh, the lamp and then you can project it. I've set up a tripod with my phone looking into the hole there all right let's try hang on what was that <clears throat> oh no that's all right so pain in the ass <clears throat> yeah Getting it lined up is so fiddly. I had to put it in pro video mode. So if you go to video, go to more, this is on the Samsung. And then I went into pro mode because in pro mode, you can get multi, uh, manual focus. You'll need manual focus is the best thing to do. And uh, the best thing is one to one ratio. You don't want 16 by nine, you want one to one ratio because Super 8 film is not 16 by 9, it's, I don't know what it is, I think it's 4 thirds, I think it's uh, 4 third ratio, but 1 to 1 is good. And then I zoomed in, lined it all up, and then you've got to focus there, 
move it around a bit, line it all up, get that focus perfect. You see the autofocus is coming in and out, then it's flickering. So that seems to be working. If I hit record, it's so alright, now I'm recording. <laughs> That's my brother. And now it's flickering again. I don't know what the hell that is. Probably obviously to do with shit with the frame rate and stuff. Anyway, when you're in auto mode, it seems to be alright. Let's go to manual mode. There, I'm in pro mode. Now the object here is to get it in, to get full control of the manual focus. Like that. There. Make sure it's all lined up, otherwise you're going to miss some valuable real estate. What's that? A, a, is that a Tirana? And then what you got to do is, the main thing is speed. That's the reason why you want to go into pro mode. You want to drop it to 1 over 30. Because uh, I'm at 1 to 1 ratio. Full high def, 30 frames per second. Um, so you want to use the shutter speed at 1 over 30. If you go any, if you go higher, obviously the uh, exposure changes, but you start getting flickering. So that's the best I can get. That's the best I can do. If you don't want to go into pro mode, let's just see what the video can do by itself. Just like when you're taking a normal video, no pro mode or anything. Start recording. When you take full control of the of the phone, it's much better. Well there you go, that's alright there like that. So there you go. That looks pretty good. That looks pretty good. And that's now converting over to the phone. Okay, let's try another way. That little light stand makes a perfect little screen. I mean I could do the wall but the smaller the more clarity you get I guess. It's like uh, you know <laughs> more megapixels per inch the smaller the screen. And what I'm going to use is the trusty old Olympus BM10. Okay so I've put it in movie mode. I've got that glaring over there. Now, I put it in P mode, so, for program auto, and that seems to work. Uh, there's not much uh, shutter, you know, like flickering, although there is a little bit there. If I go to shutter priority, That's, I think that's much better. And then I can go down to 60, 50, 40. Well, I can only go down to 25. So. The only thing I can see, some, there's a little bit of uh, flare. You see there, there's a little bit of flare there from the, the screen. If I'm shooting at 24 frames per second, then the shutter speed should be 50. Full high def, 24 frames per second at shutter speed 50. This is on shutter priority with a vivid profile. And that seems to be all right. A little bit of glare off there, but what can you do? Probably the best way would be that box because it's clearer, more definition, but filming off the wall or that little white thing was pretty good too. And the frame rate, you can, you know, you can either put it in just full program mode and just do it like that, or, you know, muck around with shutter speeds. Now, if you don't want to fight ass around with all that, just uh, get that little, get that, you know, 600, 
get that six hundred dollar get that six hundred dollar thing that scanner that Wolverine I think it's called Wolverine uh, there's a few different brand names out there and what that does that scans each frame one by one you know and it moves across so that's like you know physically with a flat it's like a flatbed scanner filming it you know one take a picture 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 I mean if you really want to be um, cheap about it and go the cheapest route and the best quality you could get the reel <laughs> chuck it on a flatbed flatbed scanner hey Jerry you understand put it on a flatbed scanner and then scan it then scan it the next bit and scan the next bit take it into Photoshop <laughs> cut out each photo <laughs> I mean that would be that that would be ridiculous. You would probably spend six months just doing a three minute reel. Jerry, what are you doing? You're scratching again. I think I saw one guy on the internet once. He tried to do that, and he wrote some batch file in in DOS or something. You know, some programming. Jerry, he sped it up by with some batch program that he wrote. But man, that's just way too hard. Hey Jerry, and then you can get all your memories over to digital because who knows how long you know these are going to last. I mean, I've had these for uh, these are about 50 years old now, and they're still all right, they haven't deteriorated. If you keep them in low humidity, you know, in a dark place, they might last for about a hundred years, I guess. Bung it on the old computer fire up a video editing software and you can you know crop adjust the crop and everything to get it precise uh, add some color if you want brightness darkness you can do a lot of things in post and then you can edit it put music whatever you want i put it on dvd i had a little menu system uh, you can scroll through the menu because then you can chuck it on the tv and you can hand it out to elder relatives who don't know much about computers but they do know about dvds so like i made some dvd covers you know put what film what it was but like i said who the hell uses dvds anymore you can go to professionals but normally a professional that they charge you a fair bit of money um they probably have like really good scanners uh, better than the ones that you can get on eBay, that Wolverine one. Like these are full on, and I think they clean it. They clean the film as well. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you on the next one.